There was once a gentle saint who walked across one southern campus with a message heard from Tokyo to Louisiana to the halls of Congress in Washington, D.C. Now, the SEC has been known for some of the best play-by-play -play men to later have passed away unexpectedly, like in the case of Ron Bramblett, who was the Auburn radio announcer, along with another one in Jim Fife. But one announcer made such an unquestionable worldly impact on not just the shape of college broadcasting, but also to faith, passion of his job, and joy for all sports at one SEC school, the University of Arkansas. Meet Paul Ells, who was the voice for the Razorbacks from 1978 until 2006. He was born and raised near Iowa City, Iowa in the small town of Mechanicsville, Iowa, where he later would end up graduating from the University of Iowa. After graduating from the school in 1967, he moved to Tennessee where he was the sports director at what is now referred to as WSMV TV in Nashville, while also commentating football and basketball games for the Vanderbilt Commodores on the radio for 10 years. While in Nashville, Els's trademark radio call was Holy Smokes, and more on that in a minute. In 1978, he he moved to Central Arkansas to become a sports director at KATV in Little Rock, Arkansas, where he also worked in radio and television as the play-by-play -play announcer for the Razorbacks football and basketball teams, and he was the host of the TV football and basketball coaches show. He was known and beloved statewide for his fantastic broadcasting voice and his trademark radio calls and during his time as the voice of the Razorbacks, Ells became an iconic figure in the state, as evidenced by the fact that he was inducted into the Arkansas Sports Hall of Fame in 2006. Also, he was awarded as the Sportscaster of the Year in the state of Arkansas 13 times and was honored on several occasions with an Associated Press Award for the best sports play-by-play -play announcer. Ells was routinely referred to as the nicest man in the state of Arkansas, according to personal accounts by Mike Huckabee and even as far as former President Bill Clinton. He worked on notable broadcasts with some of the most famous sports faces in the world. He even announced some of Arkansas's greatest sporting achievements of all time, from the miracle at Microsoft to the seven overtime thriller versus Kentucky in 2003, to the time Arkansas won the national championship in basketball during the 1993-94 season where they beat Duke. He was on top of the world in Razorback Nation and beloved by friends, fans, and college alumni. Little did anyone know, however, that a matchup on New Year's Day in 2006 where the Razorbacks were taking on Western Illinois in a basketball game in the middle of a successful 29th and final season as the voice of the school, he would announce his last gig on the microphone on this day for good, not in retirement, but in tragedy. July 31st, 2006 is a day still etched in the minds of many fans across the state of Arkansas as the world would also embrace in this tragedy that will never go away. Ellis was returning home from a golf tournament in Fayetteville while he was driving on Interstate 40 in northwest Arkansas by the town of Russellville, traveling eastbound near the Arkansas 331 exit from the interstate that crossed the median and collided in the westbound lane with a car driven by 40-year-old Billy J. Burton of Dover, Arkansas, and then the crash occurred killing both drivers as they were pronounced dead at the scene after the accident occurred at 8.13 p.m. Blood samples from the crash were damaged because of a delay in shipping after the autopsy was performed by the, by the Pope County coroner. But there was no consumption of drugs or alcohol in his system. No one was found to be at fault for his death and no arrests were made after the incident. Ellis was 70 at the time of his passing. Paul Ells is still an announcer etched in the minds of many in Arkansas. His genuine kindness was unmissed and his warm demeanor 
with his welcoming spirit and tremendous good energy, wasn't that of a Catholic Pope or a saint. To many in Razorback's nation to this day, who would go back, way back in time, to talk about a man who represented the Razorback Hog spirit so well, they would tell you about one person.